Hello, and welcome to the Texas Department of Public Safety DNA Database Buckle Collection Training Video. This video will demonstrate the proper procedure for collecting a DNA sample, completing the enclosed database card, and capturing legible fingerprints from individuals that are required to provide a DNA sample to the State of Texas CODIS database. These collection kits are available at no cost through DPS Combined DNA Index System or CODIS Laboratory. These kits are to be used solely for the collection of known reference samples from qualifying subjects for the purpose of creating a DNA profile in the Texas DNA database. These kits should not be used to submit DNA samples to casework laboratories in ongoing criminal cases. Before collecting a DNA sample from a subject, verify that their DNA has not been previously submitted. If the subject has a criminal history, a DNA status will be reflected in the subject's rap sheet. A DNA status of a Y means that the subject has previously submitted a DNA sample to the state of Texas and that another sample collection is not required. A DNA status of N, C, or a blank means that the subject has not submitted a DNA sample to the state and should be collected if the subject qualifies for DNA collection. Before opening a kit, verify that the subject has not had any food or drink other than water within the past 20 minutes. If the subject has had food or drink, wait 20 minutes before proceeding with the collection. Ensure your collection area is clean. Do not open more than one kit or collect samples for more than one subject at a time. If possible, do not have more than one subject present within the collection area. Following these instructions will minimize the accidental mixing of samples. Each collection kit will arrive sealed, ensuring that the contents have not been tampered with. Before using a kit, check to see that the seal is intact. If the seal is not intact, discard it and use a new kit. Break the tamper-proof seal on the kit. Open the envelope and lay the contents out on your work area. Do not discard the outer envelope as it will be reused to submit the sample to the laboratory. Each kit contains everything you will need to collect and submit a DNA sample. One DNA database information card, one ink strip for thumb printing, one pair of disposable gloves, one DNA collector, one transport pouch, one integrity seal, one sanitizer wipe, one prepaid postage shipping envelope. Put on the disposable gloves and wear them throughout the rest of the procedure. Instructions on how to use the collector are included on the back of the DNA database card for your reference. At the top of the transport pouch, fill out the subject's name, date of birth, and state identification number where indicated. If the SID number is unavailable or unknown, leave the SID number field blank. On the back of the transport pouch, the collector will enter their full name in the area marked sealed by along with the date the sample was collected. Set the transport pouch aside. When removing the collector from the plastic, avoid contacting the collection surface as this may contaminate the sample. If you make accidental contact with this area, discard the collection kit, discard your gloves, and start over with a new kit. Ask the subject to open their mouth. Place the collector inside their mouth with the collection paper surface pressed against their inner cheek. Apply enough pressure to observe a slight bulging in the cheek. Pull the collector toward you with consistent pressure so that it moves along the cheek and fully out of the mouth. Using the same collector, repeat this process seven more times for a total of eight swipes of the cheek. Only one cheek is required for collection. Do not use the collector to collect the second cheek. Do not rub the collector back and forth along the cheek. Doing so may damage the collection paper or cause it to dislodge from the collector. If the collection paper becomes dislodged from the collector, dispose of it and open another kit. After the eighth swipe, carefully push the slider on the collector forward to protect the collection paper surface. Immediately place the entire collector into the transport pouch. 
A desiccant is supplied with the transport pouch. Do not remove or discard it. It is needed to dry any excess moisture within the transport pouch and prevent it from breaking due to moisture buildup. Remove the adhesive strip to seal the envelope. If the pouch is not sealed, the sample will be rejected upon receipt and you will be notified to collect another sample. Let's look at the proper technique for collecting fingerprints. Agencies collecting fingerprints with a live scan instrument may submit a live scan copy of the fingerprints with the kit. Agencies not using a live scan instrument will need to collect inked fingerprints. It is recommended you use a fingerprint pad instead of the provided ink strip if one is available to you. Otherwise, open the provided ink strip. Print the thumb of the left hand onto the corresponding left thumb box at the bottom of the data card. Repeat using the right thumb and the corresponding right thumb box. You can either press the thumb or roll the thumb. Flats or slaps are to be printed in the box marked left four fingers and right four fingers. It is not necessary to roll each finger. However, each finger should be pressed simultaneously onto the data card. If you need to print each finger individually, please label each fingerprint with the corresponding finger, such as left index, left middle, or left pinky. Ensure fingerprints are clear with detailed ridges. Without clear fingerprints, the subject's identity cannot be verified. A sample from a subject whose identity cannot be verified will not be processed. If you have additional information that may prove identity, such as a copy of the individual's ID, you may submit a copy of it with the kit. If you are unable to take clear prints due to injury or other handicap, document this on the data card. If you make a mistake during the fingerprint process, there is additional space on the back of the data card to provide additional fingerprints. In the bolded area labeled Subject Information, fill in the subject's identifying information, which includes the subject's name, SID number, sex, race or ethnicity, and date of birth. Avoid entering nicknames and aliases in this section. If the SID number is unknown or unavailable, leave this field blank. Give the subject the opportunity to sign the data card. CODIS will still accept the sample if the subject refuses to sign. Include the qualifying offense and reason for collection, along with the collector's name, agency name, contact phone number, and a contact email address that may be used to notify the agency in case the sample is rejected. To expedite the processing of sample submissions, do not use abbreviations when filling out the agency name. The same abbreviation may apply to several agencies, and having to research the agency name will cause the sample to be held until the agency identification is verified. It is important that all trained collection staff within an agency write the exact same agency name when filling out the data card. You may use the back of the DNA database card below the instructions to provide additional fingerprints if mistakes occurred, alias names and dates of birth, out-of-state or FBI numbers, or documentation on why prints were collected a certain way or are missing. Once the DNA database card is filled out, review the card and the transport pouch. Verify that the information is correct and that it belongs to the subject being collected. Mismatched information on either the database card or the swab envelope will be cause for rejection and a recollection will be required. Place the transport pouch and the DNA database card into the prepaid postage shipping envelope. If submitting additional documentation with the kit, such as the copy of the live scan printout, verify the subject's identity on the documentation matches the identity on the data card and transport pouch. If you are collecting for deferred adjudications, include a copy of the conditions of supervision with the kit that specifically states that a DNA sample collection is required. Please verify that the name and SID on the documentation matches the name and SID on the data card and transport pouch. Peel the backing from the integrity seal, 
place it on the shipping envelope to properly seal the envelope. Initial and date the kit. A kit will not be accepted without an intact seal. Kits should be mailed to DPS as soon as possible and no longer than three business days from the date of collection. The kit may be submitted through U.S. mail. Occasionally, a kit will not be processed due to improper collection. To reduce the need for recollection, keep in mind the following. If you are providing inked fingerprints, it is recommended you use a fingerprint pad rather than the fingerprint strips provided with the kit. The fingerprints must be legible with detailed ridges to properly verify a subject's identity. The DNA database card and transport pouch must be filled out completely and both reflect the same information. The prepaid postage shipping envelope must be properly sealed. This also includes the integrity seal on the transport pouch. If you have questions regarding the information contained in this video or the CODIS DNA database, visit the Texas Department of Public Safety Crime Laboratory website or contact the CODIS Laboratory. We hope this video has provided you with the necessary information to properly collect a DNA sample using our collection kit. Every month, we receive thousands of kits collected by law enforcement agencies across the state of Texas. With over a million samples in our database, we're able to provide investigative leads to over 200 cases to our law enforcement partners. The Department of Public Safety recognizes that that achievement is because of you, the individuals collecting those samples. On behalf of the Texas DPS Crime Lab, we'd like to thank you for the efforts you have made in keeping our citizens safe. Thank you.